Hello YouTube, I've built a Spitfire Mark I from Tamiya in 172nd scale. I changed it to a Mark 5A by purchasing the markings for Douglas Bader's airplane. The primary difference between the two versions of aircraft is the engine, and so that's why I'm only able to modify the decals and create a different version, because most of the exterior looks the same. Douglas Bader was an ace in the Royal Air Force and interestingly enough had two artificial legs. I'll refer you to Wikipedia if you want more history on the subject. I've sculpted a seat cushion out of plumber's putty. It's easy to work with, but the downside is that it never really dries out, at least not within a reasonable time frame. Once you get the shape you want, you just need to be careful not to press on it too hard. Epoxy putty like Milliput would probably be more ideal for this, but I just didn't have any when I was building this plane. In addition to the photo itch, I looked up some reference photos for a Spitfire cockpit that showed me where I could add some additional lead wires and cabling. Whenever I'm brush painting with Tamiya paints, I mix in a little bit of the X20A thinner to help the paint go on level and smooth, as well as keep it from drying out so quickly. If you notice the red crowbar on the cockpit door, notice the clip in the lower right and you can rest easy knowing that I repainted it to bare metal color once I discovered that red was the incorrect color for the crowbar. Once the seat belts were situated, I brushed some burnt umber over them for a more realistic and kind of worn effect. I like to glue all the tiny parts that need painting to toothpicks with a drop of extra thin super glue. Just be sure to glue them to a spot that will be hidden once they are assembled so you don't have to repaint once you take the toothpick off.
Sometimes I'll use tacky putty to mask soft-edged camo schemes, but not for this build. It's just faster to freehand it, and by thinning the paint an extra bit and holding the airbrush close to the surface, I can get a very similar effect. Also, to prevent overspray or paint splatter, I'll aim the brush either off the edge of the model or to the center of the area I'm coloring. I get my basic outline and then build up multiple thin layers. Just be careful not to spill the paint out of the top of the cup, which has happened to me before, but thankfully not on this plane. These are aftermarket exhausts from Quick Boost, which I painted black, then all clad steel, and then sprayed the tips all clad exhaust manifold. I've got a before and after for each color. Once you apply the Microsol, the decals will wrinkle up and look much worse before they start to look better. It's best just to walk away from the model and come back later so you don't stress yourself out. After a clear coat, I dipped the propeller in water and sprinkled salt over it. The salt is a random masking effect for the thin mix of a different shade of black that I'll spray over the blades. I used a pencil to silver the edges of the blades and also moved it perpendicular to add some scratches along the surface of the blades. I'm not using any thinner here, only smearing the oil paint across the gloss surface. When I feel like I've used too much, I'll use a cotton swab to wipe away the excess and then keep smearing with my brush. This is a thin mix of engine grease, which I splattered on, 
You can't actually see it hitting the blades, but if you look at the white paper towel, you can see that splattering is actually happening. The kit came with three canopies and all of them were single molds with no option to display an open cockpit. Therefore I took two of the canopies, cut them in half so I could display the cockpit open. This way I didn't have to worry about my saw blade or my sanding removing too much of the cockpit edge. What I'm working on right here is the rear view mirror, which is insanely small. I attached it with PVA glue so the canopy wouldn't get fogged up. It's very easy to just wipe up. I used to use stretched sprue for the antenna cable, but then I purchased this rigging thread and I've never gone back. It's a little bit stretchy and it's much easier to work with and a little bit more forgiving than stretching sprue. Just hold it in place with a spot of quick drying, extra thin super glue.